Everybody, as you're still watching TV3 New Day, and it's time for our health segment. Today, we're talking about something that probably a lot of people might shy away from publicly, and it's the issue of masturbation. So let's jump straight into some statistics here. And research has found that amongst adolescents aged 14 to 17 years, around 74% of males and 48% of females masturbate. Now, among older adults, roughly 63% of men and 32% of women between 57 and 64 four years of age masturbate and so you realize that almost everyone has been caught in this web sort of because whether it's in the early parts of your life the middle parts or the latter parts of your life you may have engaged in masturbation one way or the other interestingly uh, religion frowns on it and describes it as a sinful act but medically some clients have had their you know uh, therapists and doctors advise them to inject masturbation in their sexual life in order to spice up their relationship so which side of the fence are you on do you think is a wrong act should it be encouraged or should we try to manage it especially in situations that become addictive i'm joined by my guest today i have a psychiatrist and also a sex therapist and it's time for me to introduce you to them so good morning by the way and to my far left i have Paul, John Paul Omojine, and he is a psychiatrist, the CEO of Free Think Health Consult. Thank you so much for joining me. And Mr. Smooth is in the house as well, Papa Kwamina, host of Adults Class, and he's also a sex therapist as well. Good morning to you. So I'll start off with you because as a sex therapist, I'm sure that you have um, had clients that have come to you with issues of masturbation. How often do you have to face um, such situations? Yeah, thank you. And, uh Good morning again to all the wonderful viewers. And it's actually um, a regular thing that we experience mm. uh, when it comes to uh, our everyday life. I mean, most people yeah. masturbate, especially the young ones. And uh, it is not necessarily bad, but it becomes bad when it becomes addictive because of okay. the effects that it has on the person who is um, okay. doing that, that act. So when you get there, we'll, we'll look at it. But naturally, okay. many people, I can tell you, married couples, singles, mm. those that are using doodles and all, they, they still masturbate one way or the other. Oh, and okay. Yes. And okay. It's, um, it is not entirely bad. It's not, not entirely, entirely bad. Mm. But it becomes bad when it becomes uh, addictive. And um, that is where we need to look at. But why would someone masturbate? What could be the reason for that? Um, usually when you're growing up, your hormones mess you up and make you think that you need sex. Mm. When you're growing, especially when you start hitting your adolescent age and your testosterone and estrogen levels start sticking effects on your head. Yeah. And then uh, the feel for that bond. When you talk to, uh, you get close to a lady or you get close to a guy, you feel, you feel like there's something that is happening. And then social media, everybody is talking about sex. Everybody is looking at, I have a boyfriend, I have a girlfriend. Mm. So people think that, oh, there's something special or there's something wow about having sex. Yeah. And then probably um, you are being pulled down because you're told not to do it. Not to, so, exactly. So uh, you want to probably experiment on yourself. And it's also a way to explore yourself because mm. most people who don't actually touch themselves at all. When they get married, it becomes a problem because they don't even know what an orgasm is. They mm -hmm. don't even know how it feels like. Mm -hmm. Whatever they're experiencing in their marriage, they don't even know. Yeah. Because they have not actually touched themselves. And then um, some would say in our current adage, meaning maybe I'm feeling mm. wrong. Because you have not actually explored yourself. Yeah. And it is through that process that you get to know yourself. Exactly. And like I'm saying, every young person, one way or the other, would have to go through that. Definitely. But you need to understand that it is not the time to start engaging in sex. It's not the time to start exploring yourself. It's not the time to start excessively ejaculating or excessively throwing out your, your sex similar. hormones. Yeah. It simply means you need to learn to control and even as a period where you learn self-control so that when you even get married, be able to manage yourself when you're married. John Paul, we live in a society that has parents barely talking to their children about their sexual reproductive health, you know. I mean, everybody is shy about it. And so they'll probably tell you don't have sex because it's wrong and because religion frowns on it. But they won't go into details and try to find out, um, you know, is there another way I can handle myself when I get to that point where I feel like I want to have sex? Psychologically, do you think that that's probably one of the reasons why the stats are so high? in terms of young people engaging in masturbation? I actually think that um, we are human beings and every animal is wired in such a way mm -hmm. as to want to procreate. Yeah. So having these sexual drives at adolescence 
it's perfectly normal. It's normal? It's perfectly okay. normal to okay. have sexual drives. Mm. Um, and masturbation is just one way of um, reducing that drive. Mm. Right. And um, for parents, well, I wouldn't advise parents to encourage their children to masturbate, but sex education is absolutely important. Yeah. And I wouldn't particularly say that that is the reason why people masturbate. Um, people masturbate because they do. Okay. And, you know, as you get to that point and you start to explore yourself, you discover things. Um, so masturbation in itself, like he's rightly said, mm. isn't anything to um, be afraid of. It's okay. not something that is bad in itself. But then, like, um, they say too much of everything is bad. It's bad. Yes. So, so when, in itself, it's not bad, but too much of it is bad. Exactly. I'm sure there are some people who are looking at you like, you did just say masturbation is not bad. But we'll come back and talk mm -hmm. about that. We uh, actually spoke to a man, a pastor, who used to masturbate at least three times in a day for five years. And so I calculated and realized that could be like 5,475 times in a year. That's quite excessive. Let's take a look at this story. Morning. This morning we are talking about masturbation. Have you ever masturbated before? Well, this morning we are speaking with somebody who was an addict of masturbation. He has been able to stop. He is Pastor David Akun. He's also the author of the book Gay Transformer. Uh, let's say I started way back in school. And since uh, we all knew of uh, fornication when you sleep with the lady, he, she will get pregnant and stuff. So, masturbation there, there wouldn't be anything called pregnancy. For that one, you yourself harassing yourself to your own sexual peak. Oh, okay, so it was the fear of getting somebody pregnant that made you decide to masturbate? Uh, yes, because I said to myself, I want to marry and give birth. So I had that in mind. So I didn't want to give birth at that early because I had a vision. How, how were you convinced with this theory? Uh, when you are young, you are naive. So the moment you are naive, you are vulnerable to this state, especially masturbation. So we were, when we get to the bathhouse, we were using soap and stuff to do when we are okay then. We become normal. So, so what kept you going? Uh, we're using soap and it was nice. And I would say when you try it for the first time and it's nice, you continue to do it second time and you become addic addicted to it. So in a day, how many times were you doing it? Uh, in a day, I was at least two, three times if I'm, I'm alone and nobody is, uh, nobody is like, is not seeing me around and I can just uh, do it in my own closet. So, uh, two, three times a day I was doing it. For how many years were you engaged in this masturbation? Let's say for uh, like five years. Five years and more I was, I was, I was into it. Were your parents aware? No. It your was siblings too? No. How were you able to keep it away from them? Uh, it was something secret because we don't do it openly. Okay. When, you, when you go to the bathhouse, you go alone. Okay. So when you are there, you are doing set out. Nobody is there. Un unless maybe somebody suspects that you've been there for a long time, but the person is coming to urinate and just open the door accidentally and get to know that you are doing it. But if not, that nobody will see it. That's why a lot of people practice masturbation, both male and female, but yet people don't know. Were you ever caught? No. So all the five years, nobody chanced on you masturbating? Nobody caught me. Really? Okay. Nobody caught me. It was after I stopped and I started when I go to the secondary schools, educating them, preaching the gospel to them. And I, I told them that I've, I've been there before. What they are doing, I've been there before. Okay. So at what point did you decide that enough is enough? Uh, let's say it came to a time. I went to uh, a certain church to 
sing. Through the sing, after the singing, and the Reverend Minister called me and said that there is something that you are doing that the Lord hates and stuff. I think that because this is spirit, there is spirit back in this masturbation. You can't just do it. That because the moment you get yourself involved, the spirit pushes you to do it more. It's very addictive. It's very addictive. After the pastor called me and confronted me and I told him that's how it happened. And he counseled me, prayed for me. Since then, Was after it? the counseling, and he prayed for me. From that time, I never practiced masturbation up to now. So it went just like that. It was yes. easy for I you to stop. I was delivered. My, it was God because yeah. what I went through, other people couldn't survive it. Mm -hmm. But what I went through and I came out, it was God. Okay. So looking back, uh, do you have any regrets? I have a regret, but by the grace of God, I thank God I'm a born again. I don't seem to look back. I just want to move forward in life. So there are no instances where you want to you think about going back? No. No, because I don't feel that edge again okay. to go back and masturbate. I don't feel that edge again. How has life been since you stopped? Oh, by the grace of God, I'm doing well. I'm kicking. Ministry is ongoing. We are we are impacting the generation for Christ. Especially the youth are vulnerable. Okay, and this has been how many years? For more than 15 years ago. Okay. For more. What will your advice be for somebody who takes delight in that act? All that I want to tell the person is that anytime you masturbate and you spill semen, you kill babies. So masturbation is something that is awful. Okay. And it is wickedness in the sight of God. So I will urge any individual, if you can't stop on your own, go visit a man of God who can help you how to uh, stop. If not that, you may practice and you may die along the way. And when you die, you go to hell. Wow. Okay, so that was a man giving us an account of his addiction um, with masturbation. And we're going to take it from the religious angle first of all, because um, he mentioned that it, it comes with a certain spirit that takes over your body and you just can't seem to stop. And so if you can't um, help yourself, maybe you should go and see a man of God. Is that what should be um, the, the way forward? I mean, he also mentioned that you could die <laughs> if you can't stop. Let me start with you. Honestly, I would want to keep the religious side of it. I do understand, but of course, based <laughs> because, on your beliefs as yeah, well, what um, do you make of it? Personally, I don't think there's anything spiritual about, about that. It's a habit. About masturbation. It's okay. a habit. It's a habit that people uh, adapt. I mean, it's a way that people... I mean, in some cultures, it's accepted. People just do it for, for the fun of it. Mm. People just do it to uh, release tension, like we're discussing off scene here. And... Um, I personally, I don't see anything spiritual about, about it. About it I don't. at all. I don't. Is it a mental health challenge? It can be. Okay. And um, the point where we draw the line mm -hmm. between normal, um, healthy sexual practice and an addictive or an impulse control disorder, if you like, is where the person loses control of the habit. Okay. Uh, where it starts to interfere with your day to day activities. You're supposed to be out you know talking with your friends or you're supposed to be at work and you, you find yourself in your room mm -hmm. masturbating mm -hmm. at that point it's, it's um you know it can be considered a disorder okay and also when it causes you excessive distress and for some people after masturbation they feel extremely terrible sometimes even physically weak and you know they don't have enough energy to go about their day Okay. For those people, if they continue to masturbate excessively and they can't stop, they can't control it, then they might have a problem that they need help with. Okay. Right. But um, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Mm. Masturbating regularly does not necessarily mean that you have a problem. At all. But excessive masturbation, yeah, can it lead uh, to death? Um, yes. In some cases, there are reports, many, many research reports that uh, people, even over, overly ejaculating with women and having... Uh, problems like that. Yes, the body naturally produces two million sperms every day. 
Okay. And every healthy body, normally one ejaculation contains up to 300 to 500 million sperms. Mm. So the body is producing 2 million sperms and you're ejaculating up to about 300 to 500 million. Wow. So it should take you a number of days to produce yeah. the sperm. So once you jack off all the sperm you have stored in your epididymis, which is usually around 400 million, 500 million, once you've jacked it all off, then the body needs energy to produce the, mm. the sperm. Mm. And usually the Chinese say that the body would find energy to produce the next one that you want to do for, with your kidney. Mm. And once you drain your kidney energy, once the kidney energy is drained through ejaculations, all you can do is sleep. You can't do anything but sleep. Yeah. So after sleeping, you wake up and you feel like you want to do it again because you've seen a ni nice woman on bed or you feel you're alone, you want to jack off again. Then the body is going to find energy to produce the sperm again. Then it's going to tap energy reserved in your brain. That is when if you have any problems with blood circulation and mm -hmm. stuff or uh, you, could, you could get a stroke. Yeah. And then after you continue and continue, you drain your heart energy. And once you drain your heart energy, you can get a cardio arrest. So wow. it's, it's possible you can overly ejaculate and get a stroke, overly ejaculate and lose your life. It's happened because there are several examples that we can even cite here in Ghana. Not long ago, there was a case around Tessano mm. where there was a police who was uh, jacking up yeah. six times with a woman. Mm. Go get me water. And then he came to the woman. Uh, the guy was the guy gone. Was and gone, he said yeah. he had a cardio arrest. Yes, typically when you drain your heart energy and That's you have cardiovascular problems, you could get... Uh, heart attack and, and go off. So what it could about, kill you. Yeah. But for some people, like um, the doc said, when they jack off regularly, it makes them feel stronger. So it's not like it cuts or fits for all. Yeah. But once you are excessively ejaculating and it's telling on your energy levels and you're feeling drained, you're feeling tired, then you should just space the, the period at which you uh, you, you ejaculate. Yeah. In a week, how, how many times should, if, if you can't stop, how many times? You see, the, the issue is, it is not based on age, it's f based on individuals. Okay. And normally, the Chinese say it's based on your level of erection. Mm. Your angle of erection actually determines your physical strength and age. Okay. So they have this, this angle. They say teens have their erection pointing up, the 20s have it this way, the 30s, the 40s, the and 50s. And it goes down, down, down like that. Oh. So if you are 50 years and you have an erection of a 20-year-old, you can behave like a 20-year-old. Okay. And still feel normal, not ejaculating. That's if your heart is also 20. Yes, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, from, from, from little studies, it's, it's shown that every age and a number of times you're supposed to, to ejaculate. Mm. But it doesn't fit for all because we are all different. Okay. And most people growing up actually took w good care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And then they are, they are old and they're still look very, very healthy and young and they can, okay. they can do what the young people do. All right. So I would not want to prescribe like, um, yes, for kids, they can do four or five for times. For kids? Yeah, I mean, teenagers. In okay. their teens and in their twenties. Should we can, not be frowning upon that and tell, telling the, them not to? You see, the, the issue here is you need to understand some basic things. The fluid that you throw out, especially if you're a man, mm. you still need that to help build and develop your nervous system okay. while you are growing up. All right. And if you are throwing it out, it's like you are starving your body of the nutrients it needs to develop completely. Mm. So most people, most people who ejaculate very often in their teens don't end up developing completely, okay. especially their nervous system and then their brains. Mm. So you see that if you... If you excessively ejaculate, I mean, masturbate when you are young, even your male organ doesn't grow. Okay. Well, we're supposed to wrap up, but I know you want to jump in, so... Yeah, so if kindly. I may, um, I'm not very well versed in Eastern me medicine. I do Orthodox medicine. Yeah. And um, some points there that's from the Orthodox perspective. Um, there's no direct link, mm -hmm. according to Western medicine, between ejaculates and... The nervous system per se okay um the act of or the experience of an orgasm itself is draining energy wise mm. right and it's you know the brain there's a lot of neurological activity going in there um but i do not think it has a direct impact on development of the brain okay per se. all right yeah. all right um and as for what is normal like you said it's it varies with people some people masturbate once a day and they're fine they go about their day everything is all right 
at school. Some people, they go months without thinking about sex mm -hmm. and they're all right. And they're fine. And that's cool. But if you happen to be addicted, I'm sure there is a, a solution for you. And of course, if you should see a sex therapist or a psychiatrist um, or a psychologist, there will be something that can be done in order to help you reduce or completely stop it. This is all time will allow us. I know you had a lot to say. But anyway, thank you so much um, for joining us. John Paul Omojine is a psychiatrist. He's also the CEO for Free Think Health Consult and Kwame Na, aka Mr. Smooth, um, host of Adults Class and also a sex therapist. Thank you so much for joining me.